Meryl Frabel, who is from Olean, New York. Uh, Mr. Frabel served on board the battleship New Jersey, as well as the uh, Krishma from 1954 to 1958 as dispersion clerk. Uh, did I get that correct, Ms. Frabel? Correct. All right, Ms. Frabel, uh, welcome aboard, uh, back to the ship. And you don't mind if I ask you to remove your uh, cover, please? All right, thank you, sir. All right, so let's begin uh, by asking, what is your current age? 84. Okay. And when did you enlist in the United States Navy? May of 50, 2050, no, 1954. <laughs> okay. And then what was your inspiration uh, to join the Navy? Because the draft board was after me and said I'd be in, drafted within 30 days after I graduated from Bryan Stratton in Buffalo. Okay. Uh, do you remember the process of you getting to the Navy from being the recruiter? Uh, I know I had to go from Olean to Buffalo to, to enlist, and we stayed overnight in Buffalo before we uh, actually enlisted, before we were sworn in, put it that way. And then uh, I took, we were put on a train and went from Buffalo down to Baltimore to go to Bainbridge, New Maryland, for boot camp. Okay, so boot camp was in Bainbridge, Maryland, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, anything you remember from boot camp? <laughs> we learned how to march. I mean, we weren't Marines, but we, we did march all the time. Of course, I realize that's a good way to get people to work together, but the marching was the one thing that really surprised me. Of course, I, I'd never been in a band or anything like that, so. Okay. Uh, anything else you remember? Like, do you remember the swimming qualifications or marksmanship qualifications, gas chamber, any of that? Uh, well. As far as marksmanship, we only fired a 22 rifle once. Okay. So that wasn't much. But I do remember going in for tear gas, which was a crying experience. <laughs> it really made your eyes water. Oh, yes. You went to the military even today. You did go through that. Mm -hmm. I can test it that myself. All right. Uh, so anything else, Mayor, for boot camp before we go into your specialty training? Oh, nothing particular, okay. really. Now, after that, you went to A school, correct? Well, after that, actually, I stayed in Bainbridge and worked at RPT, which is Recruit Preparatory Training, for three months. And that was for to help the enlistees that were, had less than, a, I think, an eighth grade education to, with, with their writing and spelling and stuff like that. And then I went to the DK school in Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. Anything you remember from either of those two? From what? Uh, anything you remember from uh, either of those two training? Well, in Newport, Rhode Island, there was a uh, officer's training school there. War College, I think it was. Okay. And this is for commissioned officers, or? That was for commissioned officers, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and I would, there were so many officers to salute, you hate to walk around. <laughs> but uh, that was all part of it. Okay. All right, so after uh, completing uh, your DK training, where would you go after that? Then I was assigned to New Jersey. Okay. Uh, so what was your first impressions when you uh, saw the ship? Well, it was a long way out, and it was a cold day. It was the 15th of March, and it was anchored out. We had to go on an open boat to get to it. And the sea bag is pretty heavy when you have to climb up the outside ladder to get up to the main deck, carry the sea bag and then the little other bag, too. Okay. Now, uh, let's backtrack a little bit. Did you request to go on the New Jersey? Uh, when we graduated from the DK school, they had a listing of about, well, one for a list of places for each one of us. And 
according to your standing in the class, you re put in your request whichever ship we wanted, or uh, there was a couple of land places too, officers. But okay. so I was number seven in the class, so I chose the New Jersey. All right. And is this still 1954? Well, actually, it turned into be March of 55. Okay. So this is shortly after the uh, conflict in Korea. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you remember uh, anything from uh, the Korean conflict? No, but I know that the ship had just come back from Korea, so a lot of the crew was being replaced and I was part of it. Okay. Do you remember interacting with any of them, if they had anything to say about that conflict? Well, that was the only time that someone was killed aboard the ship. It was over in Korea. Yeah, that was Seaman Osterwood, mm -hmm. which was right by turn number one. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did they take you to that spot where it happened? No, not particularly, no. Oh, okay. All right, so uh, once on board in New Jersey, uh, did you assume your duties uh, as a um, dispersion clerk? Yeah, but I was a dispersion clerk seaman apprentice at the time. Okay. So I was a low man on the total pool. Okay. And one of the things I had to do, we had individual coffee pots, little electric ones. And so one of the things I had to do is keep it going. And one of the first mistakes I made, uh, we'd have to go to the head in order to fill up the, the container. It was a 12-pot coffee pot. And it was so hard to get in with a sink, the hand basin, to fill the pot. So I decided to use this other sink, which was the uh, deep sink. So. I didn't know that that had salt water in it. So, <laughs> so I had a pot full of salt water. So I, I, I learned that that's not what you use. <laughs> but that was part of it. So you make salt water coffee? Salt water coffee, which didn't go over too good. <laughs> All right. Now, just for the historical record, uh, the head is the bathroom. Uh, so in case anybody might be watching this years from now, uh, the least understand what, what we mean by that. And also in the head, which always surprised me, we had a trough that had salt water running through it. And they had slats, and that's what you sat on. Okay. So they were called troughs at the time, right? Well, th that's what it was. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, you probably had 10 guys could sit on it. Oh, wow. Yeah, they did replace them, I believe. Uh, in Vietnam. Okay. All right, so uh, why don't we talk about uh, everyday life on the ship. Do uh, you remember how the food was like? I always felt the food was pretty good. Okay. Yeah, and they, they had meat for every meal. For breakfast, they had some kind of meat, which was unusual for me, but I mean. Okay. Any recipes that stand out that you remember? Well, I, I remember I w didn't care much for fried bologna. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it was pretty good. All right. And how's the, what was it called, ghee dunk at the time? Like there, there's like a service on the ship called the ghee dunk. For like ghee dunk, ice. yeah. Yes, like well, that, that's where you get ice cream or something like that after the chow line has been secured. If I remember correctly, you could even get a hamburger there. So... But if you ate the mess hall, it was usually enough, to, I felt. Okay. Uh, now, did you go in by, like, ships into the mess hall? Uh, like, not around, usually. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the lines would get pretty long, but, of course, they went on both sides. And uh, so it wasn't so bad. Okay. But did you learn to eat quickly, if I remember, did you? <laughs> Be quick? <laughs> yeah. I think they usually do that with... Um, Pretty much every branch of the military. Uh, do you remember any um, entertainment on board, like any games you played or sports you participated in? No, I didn't participate in any sports or, or any games. It was just the bunch of us within the dispersing office. Mostly. Okay. Uh, how about how about like periodicals you read, whether newspapers or magazines? Well, I had a subscription to the Reader's Digest, and every time I get that, it 
and read it, I'd pass it on because somebody always wanted it. And it got passed around quite a bit. All right. Did it come up on the ship through mail? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And you would read your copy and pass it on? Mm -hmm. right? Okay. All right. Uh, so once you got in New Jersey, uh, where was this that you got on board? In Norfolk. Norfolk, Virginia? Mm -hmm. Okay. So did you go out for like any shakedown cruises or trials? No, I can't say that we did that, but we went out on a lot of cruises. Oh. And, and the first cruise we went was down to Florida and going around Cape Hatteras for the first time. Now within the dispersing office, we had some electronic calculators on the desks. And going on around Cape Hatteras, it really rocked. And the machine started sliding off the desktop. So we had to put them on the deck. So we didn't want to. Okay. All right, so uh, after Florida, where'd you go next? Did you go to the canal? No, I never went to the canal. Yeah, went to the Panama Canal? No. Okay. Uh, okay. So, yeah. I don't know exactly what time, which times it was, but I, while I was on board, we crossed the Atlantic eight times because uh, we went on midshipman cruises for three years, which was about two months in the summer. And sometimes we went to uh, Northern Europe, sometimes we went to Istanbul, Turkey, and Spain. So we went to different places in Europe. Okay. Any of those ports stand out for you? Like anything you remember from there? Well, I remember going to the Parthenon, which was quite interesting to me. And also when we were in Constantinople, I went up and saw the Black Sea and rode up by bus and come back on a, on, on a tug or a ferry boat. Okay. So I did get to see the Black Sea. Right. Mm -hmm. You were allowed to do this on Liberty, right? On Liberty, right. Mm -hmm. That was a day tour. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Do you remember uh, the people from any of these places you went to? I didn't really get too close to the people. No. Okay, all right. Did you ever visit Naples? Because I think there is a Navy presence there. Right, right. I was in Naples once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you remember, like, seeing Mount Vesuvius or the ruins of Pompeii? Just, a, just from the distance. Okay, so you never came on board, I mean, no. on shore. Okay. And, and did you ever cross the equator? No, oh. but I crossed the Arctic Circle. Okay. Was there any shellback ceremony there? No, that we were just given a certificate that we were blue noses. Okay. <laughs> so you dodged that uh, whole... Yeah, I got a great big certificate. Okay. Uh, right. But two years ago, we took a cruise on the Norwegian line, and we went up almost to the Arctic Circle, east of, uh, west of Norway. So that was interesting, because, but the water looked the same as it did 60 years ago. Huh. <laughs> did you see the fjords? So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, w the ship was in Oslo uh, twice while I was on board. Right. So both the cruise ship and New Jersey were up there, or just the cruise ship? Uh, the cruise ship did go at Oslo, okay. but we were up along the coast of Norway. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you went up there on both the New Jersey and the Norwegian cruise? Mm-hmm. Okay. So everything looked the same, right? Well, yeah, but the accommodations were a little different. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, battleship versus cruise ship. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, do you remember uh, the crew morale on the ship? Because you're in the middle of the Cold War and uh, you just finished a conflict with Korea. Remember anybody talking about that? Not particularly, but I, I felt the morale on the board the ship was good. Okay. Uh, do you call any like race relations, race conflicts on the ship? Race? No. Okay. Because I think during this time uh, the ship received its first black officer, Louis Ivey. Uh, I'm not sure if you ever know, knew him. 
but he might have been on board uh, when you were uh, on this ship. But he was the first black officer on board, and uh, just a day after he roomed in, in his stateroom, the other fellow officer left. He didn't want to sleep with an African-American gentleman. So I just wonder if you had, like, anything similar from there. No, not on the Jersey. No. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, do you remember any of the captains? Did you interact with any of the captains on board? O'Donnell is really the only one I remember. Okay. Uh, how was he? He was up there in the bridge. <laughs> okay. So you never got to interact with him? Not, not really, no. Okay. Now, were there any, like, VIP, like, entertainers who came on board or world leaders? Not that I remember. Okay. All right. Did you remember seeing any of Bob Hope's USO shows? No. Okay. All right. Did you ever go to the Pacific, or were you just in the Atlantic? No, just the Atlantic. Okay. All right. So why don't we transition to uh, your job as dispersion clerk? Uh, so we'll start with uh, general quarters. Uh, did you have like a particular battle station? Yes, I did. It was an after lookout. Okay. Um, quite, I think it was the sixth level, and it was enclosed. Okay. And I pointed it out to my wife today. And that, that was general quarters, but for Able Able, I was up on the bridge as a lookout. Okay. All right. Uh, do you remember general quarters, like how much time you uh, had to get to your uh, general quarters station? Just minutes. Okay. I mean, as fast as you could get there. Okay. Now, how about your duties as dispersion clerk? So, what was everyday life like? Well, twice a month we were in Portland because we paid. And uh, we paid in cash. A and a pay line would <clears throat> be set up with, with a dispersing officer and two enlisted people. And we would, the, in order to get draw your pay, you had to fill out, fill out what we called a chit. And we posted a listing of what people were entitled to. And then they could draw withdraw as much money as they wanted. And then they filled out the chit how much money they wanted. And we had to put our thumbprint on it to prove if they ever needed to prove it. So okay. that, that's what they use the money. Okay. Now, did you answer to a chief petty officer or petty officer? Yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Of course, uh, on the pay line, it would be uh, a commissioned officer and then uh, a pet, couple of petty officers, and maybe a seaman or something on the, on the end, yes. Okay. Of course, we would run two lines for the enlisted men, and one for the Marines, and one for uh, the officers, and then one for the chiefs. And so there was more than one pay line each each time. Right. Now it was also uh, uh, during this time when the New Jersey along with the other three ships of the Iowa class were sailing together briefly. Uh, do you remember that? No, I do not. Okay. I think it was only once for this photo op. Uh, I remember being around the Iowa, but that's the only time. Okay. Yeah. What, was this in dock, seeing the Iowa? Uh, probably not, because the New Jersey only went to the dock one time that I know of in Norfolk. And it was, the forest all was next to us. And that looked so big in comparison to New Jersey. All right. Now, you didn't see the Wisconsin, did you? No. Okay. So some, during this time, the Wisconsin T-boned the destroyer accidentally. Are you sure it was the Wisconsin? Yes. So I thought it was the Iowa. Well, um, there is a photograph of the Iowa, New Jersey, and Wisconsin tied together. You were able to tell which one was which by their hull numbers, but the Wisconsin had a gash in its bow, and that was another way to tell. <laughs> because it, the T boned the destroyer at that time. Just wonder if you ever saw it. All right, so um, anything else you remember while you were on board the New Jersey?
Well, one of the things we had to do is, is to have cash available in order to pay people. And we were going to go on a six-month cruise to the Mediterranean. So the dispersing officer requested $900,000 in cash. And we, we got the money from the Federal Reserve, I think it was the Federal Reserve, in Norfolk, Virginia, and we had quite a caravan to go over and pick it up because there was a number of big boxes of cases. And we had a, a, deta a, a bunch of Marines go with us that were armed, and we carried sidearms. And so I think we had five vehicles all together to go over and get the money and bring it back to the ship. But even though we had sufficient money to pay everybody, they, they bought things too and paid cash sometimes. And uh, if they sold exchange currency aboard the ship, of course, they would get the, some of the cash back and the same way with the they, what they spent as far as the ports or, or uh, the Gidung stand and all those places, all that money come back at the ship to the dispersing office eventually. So they certainly didn't need all that money. <laughs> but he didn't know, you know. Okay. But so that was a lot of money to have aboard the ship, I thought. Okay. So at that time, you're like an armed guard, right? Right. Okay. So it wasn't just master at arms who carried firearms? Not all the time, no. Okay. Did you have to get a train with your sidearm first? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, 45? 45. Okay. All right, uh, do you remember any uh, entertainment, such as movies on the fantail on the ship? Oh, yeah. Okay. Every night. And if they weren't on the fantail, they were on the mist. Okay. Do you remember any movies that stand out? Nothing particularly. Okay. But I know we only have so many on board, and then that was one of the things they always wanted to exchange. Of course, they showed them more than one place, too. They showed the movies up in the officers' quarters, and the same way in the chief's quarters, and, and in the mistake. It is said that during this time, sailors liked to fish in each other's front pockets for cigarettes. Do you remember any of that? I didn't catch that. Oh, it is said that. While sitting for a movie, sailors like to go fishing in each other's front pockets for cigarettes. No. <laughs> okay, it's kind of like pickpocketing. I'm not sure if you ever witnessed any of that. No, I don't know. Okay. Of course, it always got me that people would be bumming cigarettes. We could buy them for uh, 90 cents a carton. And then they'd say, well, why, do you, why don't you want to give me a cigarette? I said, they cost me as much as they cost you. And it's only 90 cents a cart. Could never figure that out. Okay. Uh, do you remember your um, late night watches? As a dispersing clerk, we didn't really watch, have late night watches. Oh, okay. I mean, the supply department did not, the whole. Okay, do you remember any night rations? Night what? Night rations. Oh, yes. <laughs> Being a dispersing clerk, uh, we often went down for night rations. Okay. Uh, and one, one thing we did once in a while, when they made fresh bread, we'd go down and get a couple loaves of fresh bread and butter. Oh, that hot bread always was so good. And one time, the one of the cooks told us they were going to have filet mignon at night rations. So guess we all went, to, we went there for night ration. Mm. Wrapped, you know, filet mignon wrapped in bacon. First time I ever had it. Uh, did you ever have sea rations, which are like canned food? That no, we never had any, board ship. No. Oh, okay. So I remember Marines and soldiers had them. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so, um, Anything else you remember from Jersey before you transferred, transferred to the Krishna? Well, one time we were going on a 
a money run with the dispersing officer and we were up on the quarter deck and it was raining and we were in our pea coats and we got stuck up on the quarter deck for a 21 gun salute and that's a long time to hold a salute in the rain <laughs> with a pea coat on it was gets your arm gets kind of heavy Okay, so we're at well, we're at gunfire. Do you remember the New Jersey firing any of its guns? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, whenever they would fire the 16-inch ones, we couldn't be on deck. We had to be under in, in, within the ship because of the concussion. Of course, this was just training, and so it wasn't a battle or anything like that. But it was. Uh, I remember how when they'd fired the 16 inches, it was a rumble. It, it took a little while because it was a rumble when it fired. It's not like the five inches that were a snap. <laughs> okay. Do you remember any of the 40 millimeter guns firing? Oh, yeah. Okay. How are they like? Boom, 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 boom. They were really kind of quiet, but if you're close enough, they make a lot of noise. Of course, I remember more of the. Uh, 40 millimeters in training because we went on the uh, they in, in basic training they, they had a mount that we fired from so we got to learn how to pass the ammunition okay so um, after you left the New Jersey did you do anything before you got to the Krishna no no it uh, we just took a took a bus. I w the ship was being put in mothballs in Bayonne when I when I w left it because I was one of the last 50 people on board because I would go over to 90 Church Street and pick up the the pay. Actually, they were they were writing checks for everybody then, and so I'd go over to and come back for, for the pay. So when it was time to go, they made arrangements for a, a bus to go up to Newport and further on. So it was just a bus trip. Okay. Do you remember the New Jersey going to mothballs? Like, do you remember them like dehumidifying things or putting covers in the 40 millimeter gun mounts? No. Or you didn't see that process? No, but that was, I think the civilian contractors did that. Okay. All right. So uh, let's talk about getting on board the Krishna. Uh, now, just for the historical record, uh, why don't you describe that ship? It's a con it was a converted LST, and it was used as a repair ship for landing craft. Okay. So and, we, oh, go ahead. And it was stayed at the dock in Newport News most of the time. And I only went out to sea once on it in the seven months I was on board. Okay. So uh, how was that ship like compared to the Jersey? Well, it's a fat, flat bottom boat. <laughs> and it, when we were anchored out, it really rocked. And that was the first time I really felt like I got close to being seasick. That I went up and manned the rail. <laughs> Because it was got to me that time, but all all the times I, the, aboard the New Jersey, I never felt that way. Even though the New Jersey rocks quite a bit, but oh well, yeah, that sounds quite a difference. Now, how were your duties there? Uh, were they the same as on the New Jersey? Yes, and then uh, being a short timer, they eventually had another dispersing clerk come aboard and I was relieved of the duties of being a dispersing clerk and I w went into the supply department and was just uh, putting away electronic equipment for a couple of months. Okay. All right, so uh, when you left the Krishna, uh, was it being decommissioned or no? No, no, I, w I was just being uh, discharged. Okay. So you served your time. My enlistment right? was up. Okay. 
So he didn't do anything else after the Krishna? No. Okay. All right, so how was your transition to civilian life uh, starting from there? It was all right. I, I went back and went to St. Bonaventure University for a while. And then I dropped out and then I, I got a job at Dresser Industries. Okay. So uh, anything else you remember uh, from your military life? Uh, during that time you were brought on board both the New Jersey and the Krishna? Or even on shore? <laughs> no, I, well, I, I know one thing that I did one, one time. We were at Gibraltar, and of course, the rock at Gibraltar was the Prudential Life Insurance Company sign, you know, their, their insignia. Yeah. So I went down the beach a ways and took it from a different angle. So that was a, the rock shown from a different place, that's all. Oh, yeah. You were on board the Jersey at the time? At the time, right, but I was on, on had liberty. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, is this your first time back on the battleship? No. Okay. When it was first, what was it, 2000? I don't, I don't remember, 2002. Uh, uh, this ship came to museum in October 2001. Okay, then it was probably 2002. We, we, the whole family came. And then uh, in 07, Max and I came again. And uh, we had a little private tour. Just the two of us. Okay. Uh, what was your first impression when you saw the ship for uh, the next time, ever since you disembarked? It was it was nice to see it, really, like an old friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So um, we're just about getting to the uh, conclusion of this um, interview. Uh, First closing question is, is there any impact that the Navy had in your life? I thought, it, I think it taught me to be a better citizen and to appreciate my country. All right. And is there anything that uh, I didn't ask that you'd like to add? No, I can't think of anything. Oh, okay. Uh, I just had this question come over. Um, uh, coming over the Ben Franklin Bridge now, uh, like how do you feel? <laughs> I look for the ship each time we cross it. Okay. Except it gets so you can't see over the railings. <laughs> well, as long as you're looking the south side mm -hmm. or the Delaware Bay side, mm -hmm. yeah, you'll see it. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, here's a closing question that's uh, for uh, legacy. So as you're aware, this will be uh, submitted to the State Library and potentially the uh, Library of Congress, where it will be available to students, researchers, historians, uh, reporters, or anyone who might be interested in learning about uh, American history, uh, military history, or maritime history. And is there anything you'd like to say as a way to leave a message to whoever might be watching this in the future? We live in the greatest country. We have to protect it. Yeah. From within and without. Yeah, absolutely, sir. All right, sir. Well, um, I guess this uh, concludes our interview. Uh, I want to thank you for both your service and coming on board to uh, join us. Uh, so once again, um, my name is uh, Hugh Sung, assistant with the uh, Oral History Program here at the uh, Battleship New Jersey, docked here in Cam, New Jersey. And uh, today is Saturday, September 1st of 2018. And once again, our interview guest is uh, see, Meryl, Meryl Frable. Okay, just want to make sure I pronounce that correctly. Uh, from Olean, New York. You do pronounce that correctly. Uh, Olean. Yes. Oh, Olean? <laughs> oh, okay. I only remember it from the K-Bar knife. Right. <laughs> yeah. 
and her father worked there. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I have a couple of them myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, well, so this recording and any transcripts, abstracts, or indexes uh, made from the recordings will be stored in the oral history uh, program here at the Battleship New Jersey in Camden, as well as the uh, New Jersey State Library and the Library of Congress Veterans History Project. And uh, all recordings will be made available to writers, researchers, teachers, and historians. And once again, my name is Hugh Sung, and uh, thank you for joining us, Mr. Frable, as well as your service in the United States Navy. You're and welcome. We're signing off. <laughs>